What's up, guys? Welcome to another Trade Destinations episode. So today's topic, Patrick Kane and the potential trade that he may be a part of, meaning that he will no longer be a Chicago Blackhawk. Uh, we already did a video covering Jonathan Taves potentially being traded. Both players are expected to make a decision by mid-February on whether or not they want to be traded out of Chicago. We all know that Chicago is rebuilding. They're uh, second last right now in the NHL in terms of standings. They have a serious shot at, at getting Bedard. And does Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taves necessarily want to be a part of this trade, uh, of this rebuild, essentially? And they've they've been very vocal about that, saying that they don't want to, but at the same time, they feel like they owe a lot to the organization and the fan base of the Chicago Blackhawks. So we shall see what happens. But we do know that there's a lot of teams looking for a top six forward. And Patrick Kane falls in that category. And he's currently uh, top five in uh, the NHL trade um, bait list right now, heading into the 2023 trade deadline. So what are the potential trade destinations for Patrick Kane? And what essentially could be his trade value, Luca? Well, I think in terms of the destinations, I mean, I think it's pretty much the obvious ones that I think everybody's kind of expecting, you know, the, the Rangers, the Devils amongst those two teams that I think would be interested in Patrick Kane. Um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if a team like the Vegas Golden Knights um, potentially show some interest as well. Uh, the New York Islanders are another team that could potentially be in the running for a guy like Patrick Kane. There's a, there's a lot of teams that I think could take him. I heard the Toronto Maple Leafs as well uh, could be a destination for him. Uh, potentially um, this is a guy that look you know he's 34 years old you know we all know how good he's been in Chicago the guys won three Stan uh, two Stanley Cups with them three Stanley Cups actually three, three. Um, and you know because of that it's it's a situation where you know we know how much he means to this organization and you know the truth is is that you know Chicago is not going to be a good team anymore um, they're going to be rebuilding for the next couple of years you know, Patrick Kane's at, at the end of his career, pretty much. He's 34. He's still got a lot of hockey left in him, but we don't know how much good hockey he's got left in him in the sense where, you know, is he going to be a point of game for the red next, you know, couple of years that we don't really know. You know, he's got nine points, 25, uh, nine goals, 25 assists for 34 points in 45 games this year. Um, you know, for me, I think a first round pick and maybe a prospect is likely what you get for Patrick Kane. Now, I know people are going to look at me and say, you know, Patrick Kane's an elite sniper. You know, I would look at what Claude Giroux got last year um, in the trade with the Florida Panthers when he got traded to Florida. That was an underwhelming trade return. In yeah, I know. Value. But that's probably somewhere around what I think he would get in the sense that, you know, I think it would probably be a first round pick, maybe a mid tier prospect, mid to high tier prospect, and maybe a roster player, kind of like what Horvat got in, in this deal not too long ago. The other thing that you have to take into consideration with Patrick Kane is that he makes $10.5 million this season. He's got a no move clause. And that becomes, I think, the most complicated factor of everything when it comes to making a trade for Patrick Kane, just because he basically decides where he wants to go, essentially. Right. And so because he decides where he wants to go, the Blackhawks are very limited on the type of move that they can make for Patrick Kane because at the end of the day, Patrick Kane can really give, you know, Chicago a three-team list and say, hey, these are the teams that I want to go to and you can only negotiate with those three teams, right? And so that becomes extremely difficult in terms of trade return. It becomes extremely difficult in terms of moving him. And so I think that for Chicago, this is going to be something that needs to be looked at more in depth. And I think they've looked at it more. But in terms of where I think Patrick Kane would want to go, I think he wants to go to a contender. I think he wants to go to a team that's going to compete in the playoffs. You know, for me, I think the two teams that make a ton of sense for him are the Devils and the Rangers. I think the Devils, you know, with everything that Jack Hughes has done um, and, and obviously how well Nico Heischer and Jesper Bratt have been and just the links that they've had with Tarasenko, Brock Besser, Tim, Timo Meyer. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if they went for a guy like Patrick Kane as well, um, even as a rental or even if they extend them for, let's say, two to three years. There's another possibility of a team that I believe in New York that could also be a talked about. And this is one that they're not in the playoffs right now, but they've got a ton of cap space. They're a young core and he's from there. Maybe he ends up going to Buffalo and maybe when he ends up going to Buffalo, you know, he ends up playing back home, uh, 
helping Buffalo make a playoff and potentially make a push there. So I think he's probably going to end up in New York in some capacity, whether that's New Jersey. Well, he's linked to all teams in New York because he's from uh, he's, he's from New York, right? So the New York Rangers, for starters, in my opinion, it would be the favorites because they have two first round uh, picks in this year's draft. So yeah. uh, and there's been rumors linked to Lafreniere being the piece included in a deal heading to Chicago because they're rebuilding, right? And Lafreniere being in the top six in Chicago would benefit him and get him back in track and, you know, potentially see him, you know, hit that plateau of what we expect from him being a first overall player. And not only that, but there's also been rumblings about maybe maybe uh, uh, Kako as well being um, a piece instead of Lafreniere. One of those two that they're thinking of including in a deal for Patrick Kane, uh, along with a, one of their 2023 first round picks. So there's that to look forward to. Um, there's also New York Islanders who they've acquired Bo Horvat, who is a scoring uh, center. They're going to be putting Barzell to the wing, but apparently they're still in the market for a scoring winger, an, an additional one. And, you know, Patrick Kane could be that guy. But I do see them ultimately going after a cheaper option in uh, Vladimir Tarasenko. Then you have Buffalo, who all of a sudden they're uh, in a pl- in a serious playoff race because they've been winning a lot of games, and the Capitals and Penguins have been dropping a lot of games, and they've been linked to guys like Timo Meyer. So why not be linked uh, with uh, a Buffalo native in um, in Patrick Kane? You know there was rumblings about him only signing there as a UFA after the season, but why not get traded there, then sign an extension and be with that team moving forward? Um, then there's New Jersey, who they've been linked to Tarasenko, Meyer, Kane, because they want a top six winger to play with Jack Hughes on that second line, like you were alluding to before. Brad has Heischer, Hughes has Eric Halla, like and Tatar. Like, come on, they need to upgrade on that. And yeah. in terms of... Um, Another team, the Boston Bruins, have been linked to, you know, big, you know, pieces available at the deadline. You know, they were the favorites to land Horvat. That didn't work out. Now they're being linked to guys like Timo Meyer, Patrick Kane, Tarasenko, among others. So uh, who will be their guy? I have yet to figure out, you know, who they're going to go after, especially that they're on a losing streak right now. But, uh, you know, it's only normal. They're the best team in the league. And um, honestly, despite a losing streak, I do believe that they should not make any huge moves that will ruin their chemistry. They should go after depth pieces. To me, to me, look, you know, I I think as a as as some as you know, both of us who have jumped on the Sabres bandwagon, I think that to be honest, Patrick Kane going back home and helping the Buffalo Sabres um, fight for a playoff spot and play in the playoffs potentially with the Buffalo Sabres and, and the Sabres have so much cap space that they can even, you know, sign Patrick Kane to an extension, like you said, and potentially bring him in, I think makes a ton of sense for them. Um, this is a team that has so many draft picks. They've got so many prospects, you know, they're a young team. They, Alex Tuck's playing well. Skinner's playing well. Tage Thompson's having a fantastic season. You know, Owen Power and, and Rasmus Dahlin are there as well. I think you add Patrick Kane to a core like that in Buffalo, and I think that that's going to make it even better. To me, I think the most obvious destination has always been the, the Rangers, just because he's always been linked to New York so, since dating back to last year. I think the Rangers have a lot of enticing pieces. Capo Caco, like you mentioned, Lafreniere, Philip Hedl to some extent as well. Um, Brandon Othman's another one that's that's been talked about potentially in the trade rumors and obviously Vitaly Kravtsov. Um, and then there's one team that, you know, I think is is kind of under the radar here, but it really depends on their injury status. But not only that, it really depends on what they want to do. And that's the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah. And the reason I believe the Leafs are in it is because, let's be honest here, right? Toronto is is that team that, you know, they've got so many superstar talents we know what they're capable of. We know how good that team is on paper. And they have the cap space to do it. I mean, Jake Muzzin is 5.6 million in LTIR space right now. Um, so, you know, you can do it with retained salary. The other thing is they can also throw in a guy like potentially Alex Kerfoot into this deal just to shed some salary back, which Chicago would take. So it would ease the pain a little bit more. The Leafs have prospects. They have picks that they can give up as well. You know, this is a team that if they really want to go for it and stack their forward core even more than it already is. Now, trust me, I think Patrick Kane's a pure rental for Toronto. I don't think he resigns in Toronto. But if the Leafs really want to go for it, 
I think Patrick Kane is is that guy that I think yeah. we should end up going for. But um, I would like to add one thing. You know, we do have to take into a, 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 a account that his contract is ten point five million dollars. So someone's gonna have to eat some salary. Yeah, fifty percent. That's what I said. Fifty percent. Yeah, him. exactly. Right, but. Again, it's going to be difficult for certain teams that don't that are tied to a cap space. So that's why. So they're they're going to have to move essentially some salaries. You know, another like we you vent you mentioned Vegas at the beginning. Uh, Vegas and the the Carolina Hurricanes are interesting because Max Pacioretty is done for the year, uh, yeah, and Carolina, they're going to yeah. need they're going to need you know a scoring winger, and they already you know they already went and get. You know, experienced guys in the offseason like Paul Statsny, uh, Brent Burns, and Max Pacioretty that, you know, they've never won Stanley Cups, but they have, you know, experience. Why not add another piece in Patrick Kane? So that's a possibility. And Mark Stone for the Vegas Golden Knights, you know, could be missing the rest of the season, potentially even playoffs due to back injuries. So, um, you know, that could be a, a great addition uh, for them as well. And you got to take it into account. Patrick Kane is a player that's got 100 points a couple of times. He's uh, mostly a 70 to 90 point player. So if you're like, I don't know if his stock really dec decreases just because he's having a bad season this year with only 34 points in 45 games. A big part of that is because Alex the Brinkat is not there anymore. And that was like his like buddy in his, his buddy essentially his go-to guy that's who he was always passing to connecting to in terms of goal scoring and assists and now with him gone it's affected his level of production right so he's gonna have to go to a team where they're missing a guy to create another one two punch like, like I, I alluded to before jack hughes would be fantastic in being his uh his dynamic duo partner dylan cousins would be fantastic to be his partner so we have to take that into account too we have to put him in a posi position in the top six where there's a particular player that's very very talented but he's missing that specific experienced player that could score goals and get assists and that would be patrick kane another um destination that we heard at the start of the season were the Edmonton Oilers. And there was uh, rumblings about Jesse Pugliarvi being included in the deal, uh, maybe even Broberg or Lavoie as well. And I don't know if they're really interested in making a move like that. Uh, Los Angeles was linked at one point too, but I think they should focus on getting a goaltender. So we're going to exclude them out off the list. But I mean, that's pretty much in terms of trade desk, uh, in terms of trade destinations. There's also rumblings about Dallas, but I think they're more interested in getting Jonathan Taves than Kane. But, um, you know, it's yet to be determined which Chicago player they're going to be targeting. But it's a very interesting situation because Kane and Taves have been both linked to some of the same teams. So, uh, you know, I feel like if one team doesn't get that player, they might target the other player. It would be, imagine both players get traded to the same team. I, nah, that's I very unlikely. Yeah, I don't it's very unlikely. They're both being paid $10.5 million. But, <laughs> but let me ask you this, okay? So this is, the, the I guess, the final question of the episode. Where do you think he ends up? What's your team, the one team that you think, okay, he's getting traded there? He's going to the state of New York, but is he, it's yet to be determined where, which team. My, like, personally, because of the love story and everything, it would be, like, such an amazing story. And because I'm rooting for Buffalo heading into the playoffs, I think they're a fantastic team. And I I, I, I advocated for them at the yeah, start of the season, so saying that they were going to – they were going to be a surprising team with, you know, the season they had last year. Um, there was a lot of good stories to talk about, even though they failed to make the playoffs, they were building towards something. So him, Kane going to Buffalo um, in a potential playoff race to be in the playoffs in 2023, that would be fantastic. And then sign an extension. That would be uh, a true love story for the player and for the, the team and the fans. But Ultimately, I think he ends up to going to New York Rangers, and this is because New Jersey are expected to land Timo Meyer. And whenever a team in New York makes a massive move, another team needs to repeat. The Islanders already got Bo Horvat. New Jersey, I think they get Timo Meyer, and the Rangers are going to go after Kane. So every single team in New York is going to make a big push for a big player. And Buffalo, you know, they could make a big push too. Like I was saying before. When the the, the 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 state of New York in terms of hockey, it's very competitive. Everyone wants to always be the best team in that state. So 
No, for me, yeah. Just to interrupt uh, two seconds. For me, I'm going to give a shock answer. And I know everyone is going to look at me and be like, what the fuck's wrong? What, he, what is he saying? Why is he doing that? <laughs> He's going to Toronto. Really? And the reason I say that is because Kyle Dubas, for some reason, just has this thing. Like, he, I think he knows that he needs to save his job, okay? And I think that, you know, Toronto is one of those teams that just they love superstar players and they love making a splash when it comes to the trade deadline. And, you know, imagine a line of Mitch Marner, Austin Matthews, and Patrick Kane. That would just be in- insane. And then your second line is Tavares, Nylander, on, and Michael Bunting. On on like, paper, it sounds good, but we know how things... Yeah, I just... Look, I think... It's all about really, chemistry. You could put the best players on one line, but they have zero chemistry. I understand so, that, but, like, Dubas also just loves to to pull trigger on trades. And yeah, but let's be honest it. here. Out of, the other, out of all the teams here... There's, I still think he ends up in Toronto. There's a, I, I the Rangers, really New Jersey, Toronto. and... Buffalo have way more better pieces in terms of prospects, picks, and young NHL. Understood, but Toronto's gonna do it. I just, I that's just my gut feeling. It's a gut feeling that I have. I might be wrong, but you know what? If come March third, Patrick Kane is a Leaf, just remember (laughs) this video. We'll see. Anyways, guys, thanks you. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We'd like to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Any of the the, the, the fan base, uh, the teams we've covered, we'd like to hear from your respective fan bases. And you know, obviously, the Chicago Blackhawks fans. You know, what are you feeling right now with Jonathan Taves and you know poten- potentially Patrick Kane being traded? You know, two key pieces of your dynasty that won you three Stanley Cups in you know. In a, in a decade, right? We'd like to hear your thoughts on that. And what are you expecting in a trade return? And do you want to see these guys traded? Anyways, guys, we'll see you on the next episode of the Young Guns Podcast.